Welcome back everybody, glad you can make it for the Oan Extravaganza 2024. Three days back to back of nothing but Oan. Oh, are you feeling the love? my beautiful wife here, Olenka. Olga, what do you think of this extravaganza Oan style? <laughs> I think, I think it's very, very Owenish and very extravagantish. Owenish. Oh, oh, right. yeah. yeah, I think you just created a new word for the English language. <laughs> Awesome. English is Eng English is easy. Hey, there you go. Now we've got some great test instruments here. Which one do you think we're going to start with? And guess what? I didn't tell her. Uh, I need to pick from this what we have right yeah, now in front right. of us. Um, I would go with the blue one. Well, guess what? Yeah. Uh, wrong answer, but that's okay. <laughs> Starting things off with the Owan SPE 3051. DC power supply SPE series single channel. Oh, this is going to be fun. <laughs> new from O on the SPE series single channel output DC power supply SPE 3051 and I'm telling you this is a brand spanking new literally, literally just been out for a few days so you're getting one of the first looks right here shipped in that standard O on box and uh, you know what that's about it um, we didn't get any software, although there is some software to download via the internet, which we'll look at after. We have our spec sheet here, tells us what the single channel power supply specs are. And uh, we have an extra fuse. We didn't get test leads uh, with this unit, unfortunately. Uh, they're saying uh, by the looks of it that you have to supply your own. So, well, that's rather, anyway. Nice solid metal enclosure. We've seen this style before. It just works. We have those air vents or breathable outlets on either side, giving us some nice passive cooling. Speaking of cooling on the back, we have 160 millimeter fan exhausting all that hot air from the power supply itself. And this one is rated for uh, North America here at uh, 120 volts. And the fuse is rated for five amps, 250. We have that one rocker switch as well for the on off in the back. Uh, not in the front. We have our USB out here. Once again, we have some software for this, which I'm gonna try and get it to go and uh, have a quick peek at that as well. So all in all, generally speaking, good size power supply, not too big, not too small. Definitely uh, gonna fit on that desk or bench top. Front of the unit is where all the action happens. Here we have our soft touch buttons, voltage, and the current. Now they've labeled the current as an I instead of a C. I'm not exactly sure why, but anyway, there you go. Over voltage protection, over current protection. Here are the two different display modes. We'll look at those shortly, as well as the memory feature. Now this memory feature includes a four parameter shortcut setting. So you basically press the memory key on the front panel to store sets of channel parameters from M1 to M4. So uh, that's pretty good that we have four different memory saved possibilities. Of course, we have our inputs, the positive, negative, and the ground. And finally, we have our USB out, the 5 volt, 1 amp. For output control, we have one pot here, one variable pot for changing or adjusting both the current as well as the voltage. Turning the unit on for the first time by means of the rocker switch on the back, we're greeted with the following graphical interface. And isn't that nice looking? Voltage, current, right from the get-go. And as well, at the top, we have our different function parameters. Basically, the user interface will tell us what the constant voltage output is, the constant current output, the cumulative time that the power supply has actually been up and running, and the actual output power. So a lot of information coming at you uh, right away as soon as you turn it on. And of course, one of the great features with this type of a power supply is the fact that when you do turn it on, you're not actually outputting that voltage or current. You have to turn it on via the on off input at the front. So if you have the wrong settings or incorrect settings, uh, you're not gonna blow that device. SPE has four different presets you can do for a memory. And to access those, we simply click on the memory button below. Just like so. So press down on the voltage key itself. And now we can use that adjustable knob to 
change that memory preset to whatever we want. Now, if you look, our voltage limit is set to 15 volts, so we'll have to change that before we can go any higher. So let's go into OVP. So we're clicking on OVP, and it brings us over to the limit function. So we can set it to up to 30 volts. I'm gonna go to 25 volts, and we'll leave it set for 1.3 amps. Hit the rocker switch. And let's go back into our memory presets by hitting the memory button again. And now I can go ahead and change that voltage. So let's put it up to, we'll say, oh, 21 volts. And I'm gonna click, click on the I as well. And I'm gonna bring the maximum current to 1.2 amps. And there we go. We now have a brand new preset, number one, for 21 volts up to a maximum output of 1.2 amps. We're going to have my phone plugged into that USB port and you can tell it's putting out 5.04 volts and 210 milliamps. How would you like to win a brand new multimeter 2024? What a great way to start the year, don't you think? Well, courtesy of Owan, you can. Just simply leave your name, well, not your name, your, your call sign, comment below. You know how it works. Subscribe, of course, and hey, you're automatically entered to win. Good luck. Right now we have the DC power supply hooked up to a fan. Um, we're pushing out about nine volts, as you can see, at 171 milliamps, about 180 according to the uh, bench meter over here. Um, no real distortion. We have a pretty good uh, looking oscilloscope line going out. So the power does definitely seem to be clean. Now let's just bring up that power a little bit, shall we? So we, we're gonna bring it up to 12 volts. And at the same time, we've automatically increased our current run out to 275 milliamps according to the power supply, 284 according to the meter. Uh, once again, we have that nice clean wave. So power output seems to be very good. I've been logging the DC output here for about an hour or so, just checking to see if the overall line quality is good and it is perfect, not one blip whatsoever. Now there's no load going on here, just strictly pushing out 12 volts, well 12.17 to be exact, or 1.6, but now we're putting it side by side against the Unity UTP1306S. Uh, wow, look at that. I mean, they are very similar form factor wise, um, but Unity, of course, relegated to that, uh, well, still a really nice output display, but you don't have the graphical uh, outlook that you do on the OAN. Um, that being said, control wise, a lot of similarities. You can tell they both have that OVP and OCP overcurrent and over voltage protection feature. Um, you do have the memory modes as well four with the OAN as opposed to the three with the Unity, but uh, yeah, a lot of similarities. According to the spec sheet from OAN, setting accuracy current-wise 0.1% plus or minus 10 milliamps. So yeah, it is definitely in spec. Worth noting, unlike some other DC power supplies, uh, with the OAN 3051, you cannot disable that overcurrent or over voltage protection. It is always set as a limiter, and yeah, there's nothing you can do about it. The voltage display on the 3051 gives a lot of information, including the time elapsed that you've been taking your readings, in this case, almost 50 minutes, as well as that output wattage, 3.2 watts presently being put out. So it's kind of neat to get all of this factual information that's gonna come in handy when you're doing your projects uh, instantly by just looking at your display. And as well, if we hit that display button once again, we get the wavelengths as well. So if anything funky is going on, you're gonna see it visually right here. Power supplies, unfortunately, not without the odd bug. One of them is this, uh, suddenly came up the lock, padlock. No mention of this in the user manual. So not sure what this is all about, but right now it's not outputting any voltage or current, so to speak, so. <sighs> So suffice to say, this actually has software associated with the front end. And you know what? There's no mention of the software in the OAN manual. Absolutely nothing. So I uh, emailed OAN and yes, lo and behold, there is software available from the website. Why do vendors not put these details, pretty important, in the user manual? Or at least a cutout, a piece of paper in the box. But anyway, I'm not dissing any one distro in particular, but it just drives me absolutely batty. Okay, end of story. I downloaded the software. It's the 
software specifically for this power supply. User manual is pretty clear in telling you what you get and what you don't get. Well, they're giving you your standard power cord, the user manual, and one fuse. They're not giving you <laughs> banana plugs or test leads, nothing. And they're also not giving you your USB serial cable um, to attach to the back of your power supply so you can actually utilize the software that's included. Well, not mentioned, but it's there to download. So, um, yeah, they got to iron these things out because everything should be easy access and uh, you shouldn't even have to think about it. But anyway, um, suffice to say, you do need one of these. Hook it to the back of that USB out in the power supply if you want to load the software. So I have a small DC motor right now hooked up to the power supply and you can see those waveforms being generated as we speak. The current limiter right now is set to 3.6 amps, protecting me from blowing that little motor. So that graphical display, definitely a nice, bigger display. So there we have it in a nutshell. That software is pretty darn cool. The iPower control software. Have no idea why O1 doesn't talk about it in the user manual, but fear not, I will put the download links in the description below. Okay, time to see what's going on inside this gear power supply. We have one, two, three, four Phillips screws. That one already came out on each side. Total of eight to get inside this bad boy. Let's take a look. Take off that top and oh, looky, looky. Very, very, very nice. So we have threaded inserts on the front side of that control and non-threaded on the side here. Wow, that looks absolutely stellar. SPE 3000 YW, SPE 3051 CPV version 1.22. A fab date of February 6th, I believe. 2023 and there are the uh, programmable inputs for factory calibration and yeah nice nice wiring here I gotta say overall just first impression it looks very sweet look at the crimping going on look at the crimping going on here we got that long ribbon cable that's for the USB uh, for the back of the unit goes all the way to the front of the panel over there Oh man, very, very nice. Let's get in a little bit closer. I'm really liking those inputs. Look at that heavy duty, nice bolt threaded. Really good attention to detail, nice and clean. Very good use of space as well. It is a small uh, PCB housing, so they've done it very well. That 60 millimeter fan right here, brushless type. This is a really quiet fan. I gotta say, the cooling kicks in automatically, but you barely hear the fan even on high. Besides that good looking fan over here, we have our filtering going on. Uh, first step for the AC is to go through the uh, input filter circuit. Blocks that electrical noise from exiting the power supply. And uh, that's what uh, these coils are doing right there. On top of that, we have some rectification, rectification going on, converting our AC to DC. And look at those big power filtering capacitors over here. These are 250 volts each. Secondary side, we have the uh, output diodes, power diodes. They convert the uh, outputs from the transformer to DC volts. The inductors and capacitors as well, they gotta regulate the output voltages to keep them at a, a proper consistent level even as the load increases. Uh, nice attention detail here once again, a lot of good uh, quality components being utilized and a lot of uh, protection in terms of gap and placement. I mean, if you look at that, this is not a smothered, uh, set of components here. They each have a uh, really good distance between them. Some of these are going to get awfully hot and look at those two massive heat sinks here uh, on those triacs as well. So 
Nicely so done. Quality wiring from Oan as well. As you can see, look at those uh, grounds here, the way they're tied back, not just with the ties here, but uh, physically crimped as well and grounded. So nice attention to detail and some really good quality work. Hey, no worries about this cable. I just took it off when I was uh, messing around here. That goes into the cable holder there. But uh, overall, very nice. High quality components, good quality wiring, excellent uh, distance. Closing thoughts on the Oon SPE 3051, 30 volt, 5 amp, 150 watt power supply. Oh yeah, grab one. This is a great DC power supply. Those waveform outputs are fantastic. Having dual displays, two types of GUIs to look at, to monitor your voltage or current is amazing. Alongside that two and a half inch color display, which is really, really easy on the eyes and really easy to look at, especially when it's late at night, because trust me, I was looking at it when it was late at night many times and it just feels good. Uh, no mention of the iPower software even in the user manual, yet that's supposed to be a key part of the functionality of this hardware device. And what was Owen thinking when they didn't give us crocodile clips or test leads as part of the power supply package? At least one or the other. Come on, Owen. Finally, no USB serial communications cable was included, at least not in this package. Actually, another beef I had was the fact that you cannot disable the OVP and OCP protection. Now, don't get me wrong, it's got a lot of cool features. Like I said, that waveform is very, very nice. You can see the power signatures, that's what I like to call them at least. And if you have any issues, anything dirty, anything just out of the norm, it's gonna show up on that graphical display. And the fact that you have a dual display, your standard output input of, out of voltage and current, as well as the graphical is definitely a bonus, especially in this price range. And speaking of price range, we're talking 120 bucks or so US dollars, so it's not crazy expensive for what you're supposed to get. The Oan SBE 3051, 30 volt, 5 amp, 150 watt power supply gets a solid 3.5 out of five stars. Yes, it's got a few growing pains, needs a little bit of work in the firmware department, but man oh man, you are getting a lot of bang for your Oan buck. Hey, thanks for watching this review, everybody. Oan week extravaganza in full force. Two more coming up. And don't forget, we have that multimeter giveaway. That is gonna be cool. Win an Oan multimeter, OW18E. Ooh, that is one cool, cool test instrument.